This is my last vlog before the parliamentary recess. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel so you stay up to date when they recommence. It's been a period of deja vu with mixed messages and chaos from the Tories over public health messaging. They are incapable of learning from anywhere in the world or even from their own previous mistakes. If Johnson truly wants people to be cautious and respectful of the virus, it would make much more sense to continue with social distancing and mask wearing while opening up gradually. Remember, they only speak for England. In Scotland, we have our own government with our own rules. England's abandonment of all restrictions has been described internationally as a danger to the world. The World Health Organization, Dr. Ryan, summed it up succinctly. The logic of more people being infected is better uh, is, I think, logic that has proven its, uh, its moral emptiness and its epidemiologic stupidity uh, previously. At the first health statement of the week, I called out the unionists for their dishonest politicking of Scotland's vaccine rollout. Can the minister explain why his party colleagues in Scotland are attempting to attack the Scottish government for its vaccine programme, despite the fact that a greater proportion of people in Scotland have been vaccinated than in England? Does he condemn his party colleagues' attempts to politicise the vaccine rollout in Scotland, or does he consider their untruthful claims to be acceptable? I supported cross-party calls in an attempt to stop a deportation flight to Zimbabwe over serious concerns I have regarding human rights and health conditions in that country. The Home Office needs to publish an assessment it makes returning individuals in such circumstances. The votes this week were on the Nationality and Borders Bill, which I opposed. This legislation does nothing to address the backlog in asylum applications or tackle organised crime profiting from human trafficking. But it does undermine international law and it criminalises the innocent, such as anyone who rescues an asylum seeker from drowning in our waters. The WASPI campaign took a step forward towards victory this week, with the Ombudsman findings. But it's still dependent upon political action, and I remain firmly of the view that restitution must be made by government, and that enabling these women to retire would help support employment of younger workers. I presented a petition regarding constituent concerns over the Financial Conduct Authority. To ensure the FCA meets the intention of Section 29 of the Financial Services Act 2021, which, if enacted in its true spirit, will strengthen the consumer protection and safety of our financial system going forward by creating a right of private action. I challenge the UK failure to meet the Scottish Government's pay offer for NHS staff. So why is it that this UK government is unable to match the Scottish government's commitments to giving the NHS and social care staff the pay they deserve and need? My team and I will be working hard over the parliamentary recess. Do get in touch if you need help, advice or assistance on any matters. I also hope to be able to return to traditional doorstep campaigning at some point in August. And if you'd like to help with this, please also get in touch. It is absolutely essential that we take the positive yes message to the wider public. And until next time, stay safe.